All right, fellow astronauts, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be discussing a special topic today. Um, a while back, we had a video where we compared and contrasted a bunch of EVs. Um, and there was a stat line that kept coming back, which was charging speed. So before we discuss this, comment down below what you think about charging speed and like the video. Now let's get right into it. So my stance is that charging speed doesn't matter. Most EVs get 200 miles per charge and most people only drive 40 miles a day. So they don't have to stop and make a 15 minute detour to charge their vehicle. They can just drive home and charge it at home. Sure, yeah, but okay, there's a problem with that argument, right? Because not everyone can just drive their EV home and charge it. Is there's people who live in apartments who have a garage or whatever, and there's no EV in infrastructure in there. So by not having quick charging for them, then those people end up like having to go to a place, sit there for a long time, and then the EV becomes a no-go for them. Because like, say you need to do a 15-minute detour to get gas, right? If you need to do a 15-minute detour to go get electricity, and then you end up sitting there for 20 minutes, that becomes a problem for the person who's owning the EV, right? Right. And then also on top of that, it's that um, th the 35-year-old people, uh, 35 years and under, probably 60-some percent of them are renting right now. And the landlord's not going to be like, oh, just install an EV charger, it's no problem. Like some of these EV cars have really long ranges, and it's going to take more than a night to charge if it's just a regular wall plug. So you'll never actually end up getting enough range if you happen to, say, drive somewhere further than 40 miles on that one day. You, then you end up charging for multiple days trying to get that back off of the re regular wall plug. So that becomes a problem for a lot of people if they don't have that infrastructure out there to rapidly recharge their vehicles. And now if you don't care about EV charging speed, then we become, you know, stuck at these EV stations for people who don't have the infrastructure at home. Okay, I mean, the, even if you are talking about infrastructure, the technology isn't there for faster charging to be available anyway. Because currently it takes 25 to 40 minutes to charge. So there's people working on this already. Like Ford and Purdue, they just produced a charger with a phase changing material around the charging cable. So basically what the problem right now is that the cable heats up so much because there's so much current flowing through it that it'll melt the cable if you don't get the um, cooling right on it. So people originally thought maybe it will do water cooling. It makes this really bulky, heavy cable. But with the phase change material, it's a light cable. So then they'll be able to charge a car in five minutes from zero to 100. Okay. Well, okay, yeah, you might say the car doesn't exist. Yeah, Same, it's just like a solid-state battery. It doesn't exist yet. Now, as long as the charging infrastructure exists, now you all have to do is create the vehicle that can accept it. Because one way or another, one has to come first. Like, it's a chicken and egg thing. So either way, what if one shows up, then the other will likely follow because I think it's okay. it, it is important for people to have like so a certain segment of people are currently locked out of the EV market just because of this one problem. Okay, right. So we do want this to be expandable to more people. That's why the charging speed mattered. Right. At least in my mind, it matters. I don't know how much it matters to every single person, but like. Um, you also mentioned 40 miles a day, right? There's some people who might want to do a road trip. I know it's not you, right? You'll never like you take a long road trip or think that would be an enjoyable thing. But there are some people who want to drive some distance to get to their vacation spot. And if they have to stop for long durations of time, even if the duration of time is not that long, let's say it's the current 25 minutes. Let's say right now we only have 1% of people driving EVs. Mm -hmm. Maybe less, actually. I bet it's somewhere less than 1%, but I wouldn't be too surprised if we're between 1% and 2%. Let's just say 1%. Let's just say 1%. In California recently, when people were starting to go on uh, their holiday 
vacations and everything, Tesla had to be like, okay, so we're going to do off-peak free uh, so that people will show up off-peak to charge their vehicles because they're having such congestion and long lines at their charging stations that it was starting to become a problem for even their infrastructure because they have the biggest network of fast chargers. So if Tesla's having this problem where everyone's now lined up at their stations, people are going to be like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to drive an EV because when I go on this once in a while road trip, now I'm just stuck at these stations right. waiting for forever. Now, so if I went faster on each charge, then there would be less people sitting in line. Yeah, but the technology isn't here yet. So there's got to be another solution. Then. Okay, yeah, there, there actually kind of is. This is the interesting thing. Um, Aptera, very interesting car. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, is a car that has a shape that allows it to go very long ranges, but without um, having a huge battery. So a 100 kilowatt battery on the Tesla Model S will get you about 300 miles of range on a great day, right? The Aptera has a claimed range of 100 kilowatts will get you a thousand miles. It's just a shape. There's no other. It's just, well, okay. It's a shape and the material that the frame is made of. It's a composite material, which is kind of like aircraft stuff. Oh. So now you're talking about super like... Super lightweight. Yeah, super lightweight. So that's what makes, let's say, the 787 more fuel efficient than the predecessor to that. Because it's composite. And everyone's going composite now. So if we could take a car from steel to composite, you're losing a lot of weight and thereby getting a lot of range. So um, the Aptera not only has a super long range, like a thousand miles, your bladder won't even last that long, <laughs> right? So they have smaller batteries, like let's say 25 kilowatt. That's their smallest size. It'll so go 250 miles on that 25 kilowatt battery. That's about a quarter of a size of a regular EV battery. Yeah. Size, battery. Yeah. Uh, because let's see, the Polestar 2 and 80 kilowatts, almost 80, 78 kilowatts. And this one's 25, so a, th um, a third. A third. Right, so a third of the size, you can imagine how much faster that's gonna charge, right? So using a different shape of vehicle will get you much more range. So we're kind of solving for everything. Mm -hmm. You're solving for the range of the vehicle, you're solving for the charging speed, and you're also solving for efficiency. So some people are worried about grid infrastructure, but we'll talk about that later. But you're solving for all of these things all in one go. Okay. And get this, one more cool thing about the vehicle, solar charging. So on your regular 40 mile a day trip, it'll charge that just sitting on the driveway. You just park it. You just park, park it. it in the sun 40 miles a day. You get your 40 miles a day, you'll never charge it. Wow. Oh in large parts of the world. So you can go on Aptera's website and you'll see like where in the world they think you'll never need to charge. And then in the other places where it's like colder, higher latitudes, you might charge like three times a year or something because in the summer you'll have enough anyways. Okay. And then you also, it's not a one-off, okay? It's not just, oh, this one company claiming this. Lightyear One is also claiming to be able to make something like this. And they're gonna do it on a four-wheeled ve four vehicle that's also four seater. And these are not like these experimental cars that we see in the magazines or whatever videos where there's no air conditioning, you have to wear a helmet and like you're roasting in the sun as you drive this vehicle. This is air conditioned vehicles with all the stuff that you would expect out of a normal modern vehicle getting this long range and solar power. Well, I mean, I've seen the Aptera. Yeah. The shape is definitely different. It's, it's cool. not it's not everyone's taste. Sure, yeah. So I'm not I I can see how they've really solved all these problems that we're talking about. But I'm not still I'm not super convinced. Um, I'll give you some more, okay? 0 to 60, all wheel drive, 3.5 seconds on the Aptera, on the Aptera. So it's not like a slow dinky bicycle thing wow yeah so there's a lot more new technologies coming out on the ev front and the solar powered vehicle front so stay tuned we'll talk about those in a further video 
Um, but let us know what you think about charging speed. Um, leave that in the comments below. Make sure you like the video and subscribe.